All right, guys, um, this is going to be part two um, of our two-part note lecture series on Ideas and Art of the Renaissance, which is Chapter 5, Section 2, if you're paying attention um, in the textbook. So your whole DBQ, as we already discussed in the Zoom meeting, is based on art. So this next little section here is a broad overview of the major changes from the Middle Ages to the Renaissance. Uh, serve you much better to watch the video I posted that specifically goes over changes from the Middle Ages to the Renaissance art. But the whole thing to remember is people in the Renaissance, right, are interested in changing their world uh, and changing the world around them. So people in the Renaissance, or at least participating in the Renaissance, had much more interest or concern with the natural world, uh, more so than those people just of religion. Because, again, the natural world served no real purpose for you. It was just getting to heaven. So where do you see all of these new, well, not all of them, a lot of these works of art created in the Renaissance? Uh, a lot of them are frescoes, and I've already explained the uh, difference between water and oil-based paint. So that's a big difference. Um, well, I'm getting to that later, sorry. Uh, so another thing here, three dimensions. Uh, Middle Age art, as I discussed with you in the Zoom meeting, was very two-dimensional. Generally had little to no background. It was just something on a plain surface, just like plastered there. Um, there was no realism in the Middle Ages in the painting. Um, everything looked like all the faces looked almost exactly the same. Uh, there was no real individuality, which is another thing you could argue um, in your DBQ, that these paintings show individuality because people are shown as different, or at least the characters represented in these paintings and these works of art are not all the same um, as they were in the Middle Ages. You see a lot more nudity um, during the Renaissance and its works of art because in the Middle Ages, um, large focus on religion and Christianity, so nudity is a sin. Uh, so yeah, that was heavily, um, how can I say, restricted by the church uh, during the Middle Ages. Uh, so yeah, right, the statue of David, um, Botticelli's, the, the Venus one, right? Because people are more concerned now not only with the world around them, but the human body as well. Um, during the Black Plague, right, all these people dying, people wondering why, Right? So not only studying the world around them, but the body, you know, what makes the body sick? What makes it strong? You know, those sort of things. And you can see that in the art. Again, all these really realistic, hyper-realistic, new depictions of humans, right? There's other things the video talks about in terms of differences like um, symmetry, like um, the use of triangular, tri I can't remember, triangle dimensions. But yeah, watch the video. Um, that's going to probably do you better than my explanation. So again, not only new advancements in art and architecture, but more advancements in physiology, which is an anatomy, which is understanding the human body, as I just said. All these works of art that you're looking at and using all were created in the High Renaissance, so right towards of what most historians would consider to be the end of the Renaissance is when these came out. So the reason we study these is because these represent, right, how can I say, the biggest accumulation, meaning collection, of all those Renaissance ideals in just single paintings. Um, paintings before this in the early Renaissance, yeah, they started to represent those values, but these kind of collect them all. like. Da Vinci's Last Supper, hyper-realistic individuals, three dimensions, right? It, it carries a lot of different Renaissance traits, not just one or two. Same with the Mona Lisa. I didn't give you Da Vinci's self-portrait, but interestingly enough, he did that entire self-portrait of himself from his memory. Uh, he didn't have a mirror or anything. He just did that straight from his memory. So that was kind of interesting. Uh, Raphael, you looked at, um, like I told you guys in the Zoom meeting, He's mostly known for his Madonnas, and no, not the chick, right? The old pop singer. I know this is probably lost on you guys. This is showing my age. Um, but Madonnas in art history 
are depictions of the Virgin Mary holding the baby Jesus or comforting the baby Jesus in some way. And there's all kinds of different ways, again, that these are depicted. Uh, Michelangelo, um, you saw some of his works of art. He's sculptor, painter, architect, worked for the Vatican. Um, here's an example of a Madonna, right, which looks much different than the ones I showed you in the Zoom meeting, but it's still a Madonna because there is the Virgin Mary, and again, holding the baby Jesus. This is the one in the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican. Uh, this is actually oil on canvas, not water paint. Okay, Michelangelo, again, you're looking at the sculpture of David, um, but also... Michelangelo hired by the Vatican, the Pope, to create works of art um, in Rome. So this is also on the Sistine Chapel. This is, um, sorry, this is Adam and I believe God. I can't remember the exact name of this one. I think it's called just Adam in the Garden or something like that. But anyway, you don't need to know that one for your test. Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about here is the spread of Renaissance ideals. Uh, and the first place those Renaissance ideals are going to spread to are to Northern Europe. So I believe there is an SAQ asking you to compare the Northern artistic Renaissance movement with that of the Renaissance. How are they similar? How are they different? So where we're talking about here in Northern Europe, we're mainly talking about the countries today of Belgium, Luxembourg, uh, the Netherlands. So basically Northern Europe or what is otherwise referred to by Europeans as the lowlands or the low countries, mainly due to their elevation with the sea. They're very low and flat. Um, so big difference uh, between Renaissance art and Northern European art will mainly be the things created or used to create them. So again, Renaissance art used mainly water-based paint because it's warmer in those uh, climates and in the Northern Europe like the Netherlands and Germany and those areas, um, oil-based paint, right? Because it's colder, oil doesn't freeze at the same temperatures as water. Uh, most of the work were done on small uh, little canvases. Like if you look at these frescoes created during the Italian Renaissance, they're huge. They take up the entire sections of walls and ceilings. Uh, Northern art is more of what, more than our, um, Renaissance art is more of what we think of today, right? Just a canvas that you're in a room and you paint on, right? Um, Flanders in the Netherlands becomes the, one of the main schools spreading Renaissance ideals. Uh, remember we talked, I think we talked, maybe we didn't, but there was this movement called scholasticism towards the end of the Middle Ages where basically all of these universities or schools will set, were set up, and they still exist there today, like Oxford, Cambridge, right, um, those ones over in Europe. So Flanders uh, emerges as one that's mainly focused on art and Renaissance values in art. So Jean Van Eck, right, make sure you know him, because again, oil painting, hugely important to helping Northern Europeans continue their work with art and practicing Renaissance ideals. Albrecht Dürer becomes one of the more famous northern renaissance artists of the time period i don't have time to really show you much of his stuff just be familiar with his name and i think that's it yeah okay so make sure you watch all the videos that i have posted including these on their lectures of course and take notes as needed study your vocab your primary sources um i'll be looking at your outlines here soon otherwise um have a great day and i'll uh, see you guys soon take care